Second Amendment was written into the Constitution, our founders knew that what they were writing in stone and guaranteeing to be protected forever, as long as America exists, was the right of the citizens to not only own fighting weapons like an AR-15 or modern fighting rifles, but also the gear that accompanies those different weapons platforms. If you look back 10 years ago and you thought about night vision and you asked people 10 years ago, should citizens own night vision, they'd probably look at you like you're crazy. Generally speaking, most people would say, no, there's no reason for a citizen to own night vision at all. And if they found out that you owned night vision or any of the gear associated with night vision, they'd probably think you're crazy. And you fast forward to today, there's more night vision out in the wild in the citizens' hands than ever before. And when I'm talking night vision, I'm talking stuff like weapons mounted thermal, helmet mounted thermal, helmet mounted night vision, infrared lasers, illuminators, things like that. They're far more commonplace now versus 10 years ago. And that's a really good thing because that's the proliferation of modern gear, modern equipment in the hands of regular citizens like you and me. And guys, tonight on The Range, we're gonna be talking about citizens and why I think you should consider owning night vision gear. We talk a lot about cultural shifts in our content. And many of you have experienced this kind of thing in your life. If you're like me and you look back to the early to late 90s, owning an AR-15 was super strange and it was looked down upon in many cases. People just didn't think that a normal person would or should own an AR-15 or anything like that. So we kind of dissect the why behind how we went from that cultural reality to where we are today there's a lot of factors that played into that. One of the main factors was the fact that the assault weapons ban that ranged from 94 to 2004 had a sunset clause and it went out of existence. So when that law passed, or faded away I should say, we were able to then purchase these modern fighting weapons again and we didn't have to worry about the illegal restrictions that were placed upon them. So what immediately followed that was a proliferation of the most popular rifle in American history as well as the normalization of that through media, through movies, through video games, and just through interactions with people on a large scale in our communities, owning and then teaching other people about these firearms. So when we talk about night vision, we're in a very similar situation today. I look back to about seven to 10 years ago when I found out that a bunch of my buddies were buying night vision, I was kind of taken back and just said, hey, that's kind of strange. Why would you want to own night vision? And the reality is they knew something that I didn't know at the time. And what they knew is that this gear falls under the exact same purview, the exact same blanket of our rights as all the different guns and the other equipment. So what we're seeing today is a proliferation of night vision and it's why our company has been talking about it so much. But before I dive into all of that and all the reasons why I think that citizens should consider purchasing and owning night vision, I wanted to just take a second to kind of define what I think night vision is. Because when I look at night vision, it's a holistic approach to being able to function in the dark. A lot of people, when they think about night vision, they're immediately gonna gravitate towards something like these binos that we have here on the table. If I hold these up, a lot of people are like, yeah, that's night vision. It's normal, people are saying, yeah, I get it, that's what night vision is. But to me personally and to our team, night vision is about far more than just having a set of binoculars like this so that you can see at night. Another aspect of night vision is having a weapon platform that allows you to function with your night vision. And what that often means is having some sort of laser on the front of your weapon so that you can aim. This also has an illuminator or even having an optic that allows you to passively aim through the device. And that's something that a lot of people don't really realize that you can do. You can purchase optics that allow you to function with that optic just like you do with your optic during the day. 
So I normally with the Uzi, if I'm shooting it, I'm looking through the optic with the right lens setup or the right Tarsier, the matte box Tarsiers on your unit, something that can kind of dial back your unit with something like this SLX. You can shoot just like you would with any other optic. Now certain optics have some limitations and this particular SLX does have some limitations when I'm running it with nods, but most modern red dots are gonna give you the function to be able to dial it back into night vision settings and you seriously just aim just like you would during the day. So when we talk about night vision, we're talking about ways to wear night vision, ways to carry night vision, ways to function and shoot with night vision. And then we get into the other accessories like handheld thermals, which we are super passionate about because at the end of the day, these things allow you to scan and see and find things very quickly. So it's a holistic approach to night vision. It's not just saying, here's one thing that you need and then that's it, you're good to go. And a lot of people don't think of it like that. A lot of people kind of have a short sense of what night vision is, and that also affects how well we can proliferate this equipment into the masses and also make it more normal for the masses. And so when we're looking at the cultural shifts and what our mission is, our mission is to equip people with tools and training with modern fighting arms and modern fighting equipment so that they can become better assets to their community. There's also another aspect of this that we don't talk about necessarily as much, but this year we really started leaning into and preaching to you guys through our content. It's something that we're really gonna hammer home over the coming years. It's the fact that the more that we proliferate this gear, the more normal it becomes, the harder it is for these communists in power to regulate it. What I mean by that is we look at the AR-15s and how the sunset clause ended at 2004 where the assault weapon ban expired. Look at today how many tens of millions of AR-15s or similar platforms exist. Now we know that the federal government likes to talk a lot about regulation, banning this, that, and the other thing. The reality is it's gonna be impossible for them to do that. Unless we all willingly stand up and say, hey, here's our gun, take it and do what you must with it. It's impossible to regulate those arms at any grand scale. And so what has happened is through proliferation, normalization, and changing culture through content, media, video games, and interactions face to face with people, we've effectively put a lock on that particular type of firearm and it secures those rights for future generations. And so while most people are saying, I don't need night vision, I don't want night vision, or I can't afford night vision, the reality is that doesn't matter. This isn't a topic just for people that wanna get out and hunt or be able to defend themselves or people that are preparing for societal collapse, things like that. These are normal people just like you and me that are out buying this equipment. And even if you're not buying this equipment, you have a place in this story and you have the ability to change the tides of culture. The way that we're doing that at TA Targets is largely through the content, it's through education, and it's through running modern equipment. And some of that is geared just like this. There's a reason when you see our videos, you often see me running around with equipment like binos like this. It's because I want to make it normal. I want to make it abnormal for people to not see this equipment. And if you look back 10 years ago, you'd show up at a range, you would never ever in a million years see someone with a bump helmet like this running around on a range. It just didn't happen. But now if you go to any range in America and you're seeing guys with modern weapons, more often than not, you're going to see equipment like this on the range. And because of that, we are seeing a new trend and a growth in the area of night vision. And that's why we're pouring so much energy into this because at the end of the day, we believe that this equipment is the same as owning a weapon. So there's a couple of reasons why I would tell people to consider purchasing night vision. Number one, it's sexy, it's awesome. Having the ability to see at night is incredible. And being able to see at night affords you a ton of different options when you're moving around in darkness. You don't have to give off signatures or shine lights that show people where you're at. You can navigate in complete darkness. You can pursue prey or you can evade. Having these tools on deck allow you to do more than just engage targets and train. Having the ability to navigate terrain in complete darkness is an amazing, amazing option for anybody no matter what area of the country you live in. When we look at our rights around firearms, night vision falls under the same purview as the Second Amendment. Now, I just wanna explain that for a second because I lose some people when I start talking about that. When we think about the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment doesn't grant us anything. Those rights to own firearms and to defend your life exist before any Second Amendment was ever written. And the right to liberty and freedom and the ability to pursue your own happiness 
That exists before the Second Amendment was ever written into the Constitution as well. So when we wrote the Constitution, we wrote the Second Amendment, a lot of people get stuck on the military arms. And while the Second Amendment does guarantee us the right to own military fighting weapons, it also encompasses all of the gear that is associated with those weapons. And so what I mean with that is when we look at police and we look at military and we see the gear that they're running, the small arms that they're using, the supplemental equipment like communications, navigation, and things like night vision, all of this equipment falls under the purview of the Second Amendment because if we truly believe that that is guaranteeing our right to be able to fight off a tyrannical government and protect our rights, the equipment that accompanies all of this, plate carriers, armor, night vision, helmets, land nav, communications, all of that falls under the purview of those rights. As we're talking about descending into darkness and a lot of you are getting into scenarios like hunting, having night vision and tools like this allow you to have better positive identification of whatever prey you're hunting. What that means is we can be safer in the darkness when we're shooting at night, we can be safer, we can be sure of what's in front of and beyond our targets. Sound familiar, like a basic firearm rule? Night vision allows us to do all of this different stuff in a way that just having white lights or red lights just simply will not. I remember hunting with red lights for years and years and years before we could hunt with thermal and night vision in Pennsylvania. The reality is I could never tell what was beyond my target. And nine times out of 10, I could never tell what my target was. I could see eyeballs in the distance and we'd kind of make out a shape. And more often than not, we couldn't shoot because we just couldn't tell what it was. Having something like this MH25 in my arsenal allows me to guarantee that what I'm shooting is what I want to shoot but I can also see beyond my target and know that what I'm engaging is safe as well. And at the end of the day, the mission here is normalization and cultural change. And that happens when you guys start purchasing this equipment and normalizing it in your communities. The last point I wanted to add is the fact that we're expanding our knowledge. When we are investing in this equipment and we are learning about it and we're starting to take training classes from people who can pour into us with this knowledge, we are expanding our horizons and we're doing what I believe the founders wanted us to do. They wanted us to have this tight knit community. Everybody's scared to say the M word, the militia word, but at the end of the day, that's what they wanted. They wanted groups of citizens armed with tools just like this so that they could be better prepared to fight off anything from an outside invasion, an uprising in their communities, think riots of 2020, or anything else they might face. The last part about the conversation around citizens and night vision that I wanted to touch on was purposefully building out night vision kit. I know the temptation is to see all kinds of Gucci gear and go out and be like, I wanna go buy that and then maybe rush into it without a plan. The one thing that I wanna caution you on is we are not collectors of arms. We are users of these particular pieces of kit so that we can become better protectors for our people, for our communities and the loved ones that we have around us. I'm not bashing people that collect gear, but at the end of the day, that's not who we're servicing. That's not who we're trying to reach. We're trying to reach people who desire to become better trained. So if you wanna follow a basic formula of how to build out your night vision kit, the first way I would say to start is to not stress out if you're not at the point where you can afford night vision right now. You're better off being extremely well-versed with your weapon of choice, sidearm, rifle, whatever it might be, with a white light versus going massively in debt with night vision or gear that you can't afford yet without having a solid plan. So what I would say first, get a quality weapon, purchase a quality white light, train with that white light, and then equip your gun with the tools that you need to be able to perform under night vision. And the first step with that is a night vision compatible optic. Once you have that night vision compatible optic, that's when I would say consider getting a PVS-14 first. Get your feet wet in the world of night vision. Don't go jumping into the pond and spending $12,000 on a set of binos unless you have a ton of disposable income and you can train with it after purchasing it. If all you have is the ability to purchase PVS-14, you're better off with a PVS-14, a budget rifle, budget white light, budget optic, but being really well trained, you're gonna outperform the guys who just collect night vision. And ultimately, I'd rather have you around me versus somebody who just collects gear and doesn't know how to use it. So that's just a bit of encouragement for you guys to be smart as we're purchasing night vision. We want to normalize it. We want to see it out in our communities, but we want to make sure people are making smart decisions as you're doing this. And ultimately understand that as you purchase night vision, you also have a duty to teach others, to proliferate it out to the masses and to educate your community about that particular equipment. Because at the end of the day, the more that we have firearms like this and equipment 
like night vision, proliferated and normalized in the masses, the harder it is to regulate, and that's how we like it.